Good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar. This webinar is being put on today by PowerPoint Supplied. My name is Mike Phillips, and today is May 20, 2011. And our webinar today is about blue chips and dips and stock options. And when we say blue chips and dips, that's not what we're talking about. I've been with Power, Ops, Power Financial Group for about seven years. I have an engineering background, also some business background. Worked at a couple of successful startup companies. If you have a DVD player or a DSL modem, there's a chance that one of my chips that I worked on is in one of your, one of your DVD players or whatever. Co-authored the book, Iron Condor, Neutral Strategy for Uncommon Profit with Ernie Zarner, the president of our company. And our primary topic today will be about covered calls. It's uh, one of the most well-known and very, and probably the most popular stock option strategy, or one that, it's at least one that most people, uh, when they get into option trading, they learn about and maybe even start with covered calls and then maybe progress from there. Mm -hmm. To enter a covered call, we would purchase the stock, or if we had a stock already existing in our account, we can do a covered call as well. And then we would sell a call option against it. And a covered call is kind of like if you bought a house and then leased it out to someone with a, an option for them to purchase the house. That's kind of what a, a covered call is like. And the profit loss diagram for a covered call looks like this. And as you can see, the um, let me get my uh, highlighter here. It has kind of a limited upside. The initial position is kind of capped out, as they would say. Even though you know if the stock price continues up, the covered call, the initial position is limited. So that. Some people, you know, that's in some ways that is people consider that as a negative that the covered call is capped, but we'll talk about how we can get around that a little later. A nice thing about the covered call is that it does have some downside protection in that even if the stock that you for your position goes down, there's still possible that you can make a profit, and that's kind of represented by this area right in here. So we have the initial price, but even if the price goes down, we still can make some profit. Now when we talk about managing covered calls, one thing that we can do is we can roll a call. We can roll up, we can roll down, we can roll out in time, we can do different things as far as rolling. And by doing that, we can increase our potential return, and that's what that kind of that orange uh, area is representing. <clears throat> There's some other things that you can do for covered calls uh, to get it round or alleviate some of the problems with being capped out. One is that you can enter covered calls that are out of the money, and by doing that, um, you can take advantage of appreciation in, or a price increase in the stock. You can also leg in. And by legging in, what you would do is you would purchase the stock and then after it's increased in price, then sell a call option against it. That way you can also take advantage of stock price increase. And we're also going to mention the collar um, as, as another reference. And that is um, with the, a collar, it's basically a covered call, but then we purchase a put option. And a put option is kind of like insurance. If you remember the covered call picture I gave you earlier of the, of the house, well, basically we would be adding insurance. That's kind of what the put option does. So if something bad happens uh, to your stock, the put protects you just to like insurance for your house. Now the the profit loss for a caller looks very similar to a colored call, except for you see down to the kind of lower left, the amount of loss is limited. You can only lose so much with it because the put protects you. Now, we're going to cover uh, talk about an example position that was uh, put 
that was traded for uh, the Power Options Applied Titanium Trade Folio. The position we entered, we put, entered the position on January 10, 2011. Now, Titanium is a newsletter, and we, which publishes covered calls on stocks. Generally, we add two to two to eight new positions per month. We try to keep 20 positions open at a time. That way, it's easier for people to manage their portfolio because they can take however much money they want to invest. Say they have $100,000, they can take that, divide by 20, and it's very easy to figure out how much to trade per position. 20 positions also allows our customers to diversify their portfolios so that a problem with one position won't hurt their portfolio too much. If you have it split up between 20 positions, then about the most you could get hurt by one position would be 5%, which, which you know, a loss of 5% can be recovered. And you never know when an Enron or a Lehman Brothers or something like that can happen, even to stocks in the S&P 500. So the 20 positions helps uh, spread the risk out. In Power Options Applied, we use our sister website, Power Options. Some of you are probably familiar with that and to find the positions. And in the search, we look for S&P 500 companies. I'm, I may use this kind of loosely today, but I'm going to call those blue chips. Some people might not consider all of those blue chips, but I'm going to probably, I'm going to use that term probably some today, so hopefully I don't confuse you. But quality companies, companies in S&P 500, companies that are in an uptrend, and also companies that have taken a dip, or their stock price, the price of the company has, has dipped or fallen. Now the way in Power Options that we can limit or, or select a group of stocks, a recommended list we'll call, to search from is in the search screen there's a block called recommended list and in that block you can select what you want to search for. You can select S&P 500, you can select S&P 100, you can select NASDAQ 100. Um, you know, there's a whole gamut of lists that you can select from. But for titanium, pretty much we select from S&P 500. Occasionally we'll select from the NASDAQ 100. The other thing is we look for stocks in an uptrend. And one easy way to find stocks in an uptrend is using moving averages. And in this case, we look for a 100-day moving average, which is greater than the 200-day moving average. Have the greater than there. So when you set up power options, if you're looking for stocks in an uptrend, that's one way. You can also switch that around and find stocks in a downtrend if you want to. Um, there's also, you know, there's other moving averages that you can use. You can use 20-day, 50-day, 250-day, but for titanium, we use 100 and 200. And this is a, a search that was performed on January 10th using kind of those parameters we just talked about, S&P 500 and uptrend. So all these stocks are from the S&P 500 and were in an uptrend on, on January 10th. And particularly, we didn't have any kind of a Bollinger Band constraint. And we'll talk about that in just a second, why that is. So if you, we re-ran re the search, and we put a constraint in for Bollinger Band. And you know, bear with me a minute. We'll talk about Bollinger's Band. I need to have a chart to talk about it. But we want to look for stocks that have taken a dip. And so one way we can do that is by the Bollinger Band parameter. So if you look on your search engine, on the Power Options search engine, you'll see something that says percent bandwidth and a 20. What you can do is um, this this block is for greater than, and this is less than. And so what we're want, we're looking for is are positions that are kind of near the lower Bollinger Band. For this demonstration, we used a Bollinger parameter of five, but a a typical parameter we might use or start out with maybe is one in the 20 or 30 range or you know or maybe we start with a 5 and if we don't find anything we back off until we get to around 20 or 30 something like that so we put a 5 in there and you'll see now we have a lot fewer positions in our search and 
the reason is because the other stocks were not near the lower Bollinger Band. These four stocks, Kohl's, Home Depot, American Tower, General Mills, were near the lower Bollinger Band on that day. In particular, we want to look at Kohl's. And Kohl's is actually the position we picked for titanium. And we're going to look at the chart. And in the chart, we see a number of things. One, there's in the blue, which kind of the hash looking blue, that's the actual stock price of Kohl's over that, the last year. And then the green line is a 200 day moving average. And then the pink line is a 20 day moving average. This upper black line is called the upper Bollinger Band and the lower black line is the lower Bollinger Band. Now, the Bollinger Band it typically has three bands people talk about. One's the moving average, which that is the one in the pink, and we have the upper and the lower. The, the middle band is, you know, typically a 20-day moving average is, is used for the Bollinger Band. Now, the other two bands are basically a standard, uh, a multiple of a standard deviation away from that moving average. And I'm not going to really tell you, talk about, you know, how to calculate the standard deviation. It's a common statistical parameter you can, calculation, you can go and look up that. But um, a common standard deviation or multiple used for the standard deviation is two. And then that's what we're using in this case. We have two standard deviations. So everywhere you see the lower black line, it's two standard deviations away from the pink line. And the upper upper Bollinger Band is two standard deviations away from the pink line of, you know, above it. And as you can see, this band gets wider, and and, and you know, here it's wider. And then there's places where it gets kind of narrow around right here. And that has to do with the volatility. The higher the volatility of the stock, the wider the the Bollinger Band is, and the lower the volatility volatility, the narrower the volatility band, the narrower the Bollinger Band, sorry. Now when we did the search using power options and we came up with coals, one of the things we like to do is to look at the chart. And the one thing we like to do is, this, is to see kind of where it is with relative to some other things. I'm actually getting ahead of myself a little bit. but. Anyway, we'll go on from there. Yeah, this is, I should have done this slide a little earlier. And one of the things we look at is the Bollinger Band, and you can see it's close to the lower Bollinger Band. Searching for the lower Bollinger Band or in the lower Bollinger Band enables, to, enables us to find stocks that have taken a dip. Um, what I've found is that when you're dealing with blue chip stocks it's better to try to get into those when they're when they've taken a dip now for small cap stocks the, you know you, that if you're looking for a momentum play on them then you can use the upper Bollinger band but when we're dealing with blue chips I recommend to get in on the dip they're much more likely to, to go up after a dip than they are to keep going after they've you know taken a big increase in price now um, a time that you might want to do a momentum type play on a blue chip would be after at the, after a recession has bottomed and the market is starting to you know zoom back up again. And then the other thing we'll like to do is look to see if it's close to a previous support level, and a previous support level is a, is kind of a, a place in the graph where a stock has taken a dip and then recovers, and you can see the red there. That's a previous support level, and the current on the January 10th, the price of calls was about the about where it was at a previous support level. The reason a previous support level is important is that what that tells you is that in historically, you know, the last time the stock took a dip, there were people that were willing to step up and buy or prop up the price of the stock, and so there's a good chance that they would do that again. Another thing is the price of calls is near the 200-day moving average. Now, a lot of times when stocks Get near their 200-day moving average, 
um, that's kind of a, a low point. So that's it's nice to see that a stock is you know has all these three things close to the lower Bollinger Band, close to a previous support level, and also close to the 200-day moving average. Now, when you're looking to invest in a covered call in a position or any kind of you know stock investment, you need to go and do some research on the company. And so one thing you can do is you can listen to the conference call. Uh, in some cases, you can find the text for the conference call for the company. And you can listen or see what the, the leaders of the company, the executives of the company, have to say about the performance of the company and their outlook. And so when we looked at the conference call for Kohl's, they had opened 30 stores over the previous year. They were planning to open 40 new stores. And they said in the conference call that their exclusive brands were doing very well. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing when you have exclusive brands that are doing well, because none of your competitors have the brands or are able to sell them. Some other things you want to do is look at a stock's fundamentals. And some positive things for Kohl's is that it had a relatively low PE of about 15. Um, when the stock gets over a PE of about 20, 25, they're getting kind of expensive. You might want to stay away from those. It also had a very low price to sales ratio, which is good. The lower the you know the price to sales ratio, that's good. Basically, the price to sales ratio is the price of the stock over the revenues um, per share. Uh, it had a has a debt debt equity. It had a debt equity debt equity on that day of 0.24. Um, you don't want companies with a lot of debt. So, um, you know, a debt equity of two would say they had twice as much debt as equity. So we want to stay away from companies with a lot of debt because if they get into trouble, there's a good chance they might end up at bankruptcy and then the stockholders end up with nothing. And as already mentioned, it's Cole is a member of the S and P 500. So you know, companies in the S and P 500 are high quality companies. Um, and if they're if they start to have trouble, the S and P takes them out of the list. You know, puts somebody else in the list. Now, on a negative, <clears throat> the company didn't have a dividend. And now, when you're doing searches with power options, what what is a good thing to do is to kind of come up with your best case search. And so you come up with all your parameters. And if you don't find any companies you like, then maybe you back off on them a little bit. So maybe you search for a company with dividends and then you don't find anything. And so you take you know that constraint away and you search without dividends and you find a company. And that's what we did. We searched for dividends. We didn't find anything. We found Kohl's, <coughs> which doesn't pay a dividend. And dividends are important for stocks in that as a, the price of a stock goes down, the dividend yield goes up. So what happens is you have a lot, maybe not a lot, but there's, a, there's investors out there that like to invest in companies that pay dividends. So when they see a stock of a company that's gone down and now has a very high dividend yield, there's a good chance they might step in and buy it. And I've, I've done some back testing and research on this and found that companies that pay dividends there's, um, are more likely to put in a nice bottom than companies that don't pay dividends just for that reason. And so I like to search for companies with a dividend. Now the profit and loss for this position is shown here. You can see that and this is for two contracts. And so if we if we purchased the stock, purchased um, 200 shares of the stock at 51.90, and then we sold the call option, you could see that at expiration we probably could make around you know, 430 dollars. Now for titanium, we, we posted to purchase the Kohl's position and we got a ex, we executed the trade and got a price of 5203. We sold uh, the 2011 February 52 and a half call option for a dollar 37. Now this position has what's called an unchanged potential return of 
had an unchanged potential return of 2.7%. What that return indicates is if the stock price is unchanged, the declaration will make 2.7%. It had an assigned potential return of 3.6%. And What that means is that if the price of the stock is greater than the strike of the call option, then the stock would be assigned at expiration and we would return, make a return of 3.6%. So this is, this is, as I mentioned earlier, you know, you can take advantage of price appreciation of stock by doing out of the money covered calls and so this is an out of the money covered call. And you can see that also by the price of the stock is less than the strike price of the call. 5203 is less than the strike 5250, so that's called out of the money. If the price of coals was greater than 5250, then that would be called in the money. And if the price of coal, coal was around 5250, then that would be called at the money. And then also this position, the initial position expired in about 40 days. And we're going to talk about the caller just a little bit too. You know, we could have we could have purchased a, a coal a put option from coals, say a 50 strike put option for 75 cents, and see what that would have done for us. Well, that would have changed, modified our unchanged return to 1.2 percent. Our assigned potential return to 2.1 percent, but we would have been able to have a maximum risk of 2.7. If we compare the two, you can see that basically we lose 1.5 percent due to the put option. The, the put option costs us 1.5 percent of our return, but we do end up with um, a maximum risk of 2.7 instead of approximately you know, 100%. So that's, you know, the insurance is nice, it protects you, but it costs something. It's just like State Farm on your house. Insurance is nice, but it's, you know, it costs something. Now on February 17th, Coles was at 53.45 and the time value, I'm not really going to talk about time value today, but um, the kind of the premium or the profit is pretty much all gone out of the initial covered call position that we entered and so we decided to roll it. And so we sold to open at March one at the same strike uh, at $52.50 for $1.75 and we bought the February $52.50 for $0.85 cents. and that was a net credit of $0.90 cent on the position. Now our new assigned potential return is 5.4 percent. And then during this time period in March, Coles decided to pay a dividend. And I told you about the, when we did the initial search, they didn't pay a dividend, but they decided to start paying a dividend. And on March 7th, they paid a dividend of 25 cents. So our new assigned potential return, including the dividend, was 5.9 percent. Now at March expiration on March 18th, the price of coals is at 52.77. Now 52.77 is greater than the price of the strike price of the call option, so this stock was assigned or called away from the account. <clears throat> and the return that we got for coals plus you know, the covered call plus the dividend was 5.9%. Now, if you had just purchased the long stock for Kohl's, you know, the same day that we bought and sold it the same day that, you know, we were called away, we would have made 1.9%. So, this covered call position had an additional 4% of return over the return of the stock. And this can happen sometimes for a call. It doesn't happen all the time for covered calls that the covered call has a higher return than the stock. But sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. In this particular case, it did. Now, for titanium over the previous years, where we've been investing in covered calls, uh, we've had a return of about 24%. As I mentioned, titanium does covered calls for stocks. We do, um, we do have auto trade. We have brokers that can trade it automatically for you. We post the trades and they automatically do the trades. Um, the titanium is continually managed. 
you know, we continually watch, read and, and watch the news to see what's going on in the world. And if some kind of event happens, like the tsunami in Japan or the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, we look to see what companies might have problems in that area and get out of them. And we did, we did ex exit a few companies when those disasters happened. Um, titanium had a success rate of 90% over the last year. Uh, as I said, we like to search for companies that have dividends. We don't always have companies that have dividends, but we don't include the dividends in our returns. And so when we see our returns, that's not including dividends. So actually, if you're trading, depending on you know how many shares you're trading, you might actually see a better return. And part of the reason we don't do that is that it's kind of difficult to do it. But the other thing is that we we don't really include commissions in our rope in, in our returns and the reason we don't do that is because the you know your the impact on your return for commissions is based upon you know how much you trade so someone that trades you know large positions the commissions won't affect them as much as someone that has smaller commissions so we don't really have a good way to to show that and so one thing we do is we just don't consider dividends and kind of hopefully that makes a trade-off for the commissions. As I said, we have about 20 positions open at a time. And we had two to eight new positions every month. The other thing we also have is, is what's called safety net. And you know, I talked about buying insurance. And another way that you can buy insurance is with long VIX long call VIX call options, you know, long call options. And the way this works is if you see this green this is the uh, S&P 500, the price of the S&P 500, SPX. And then the blue is the price of the VIX. And the VIX is kind of a measure of the market volatility. And as you can see, if you look at the, the red areas, when the S&P dips, the VIX goes up. It's, it moves contrary. And if you, you can see out here where we had, you know, kind of May, June, um, where this was actually during the kind of the credit crisis, Lehman, and that came to a head uh, a couple years ago. The S and P 500 just really tanked, and the VIX did the opposite, went way up. Well, if you have VIX call options, um, they also go way up, even more than the VIX. I mean, it's leverage. And so what you can do is you can buy these VIX call options, kind of insurance, and so that's one thing we do. Uh, is to insure our, our product, or insure our uh, trade folios. So we buy these big long call options. Usually, usually, we recommend that people take maybe a half a percent, or maybe one percent, and put that into long, big long call options as kind of an insurance. It's now when we say a half a percent to one percent of a portfolio, what we're talking about is. You know, as an example, let's say we had a hundred thousand dollar portfolio we wanted to insure. So what we would do is we'd take one percent, which is a thousand dollars, and we would buy however many long VIX calls that we could purchase with that thousand dollars, and we could use that as insurance. It's it's another way to do insurance that I think is a little cheaper than trying to use a put option because, you know. Um, when you do a put option on a stock, you're kind of like buying insurance for every house that you own. But with a safety net, you're kind of you're buying insurance for maybe a a block of houses. You know, if you in this you know like this picture, you can see these townhouses. Maybe you can buy insurance for the whole block of townhouses. That way, if you have one townhouse that has a problem, um, you're okay. But if the whole the the whole block of the whole what do I want to say the whole community of townhouses are destroyed or something, then you're covered by this, this these long call options. You mean the long put? Or the VIX yes. long calls? The, yeah, the, the long call. Thanks, Mike. Uh -huh. uh, the PowerOps website is at www.powerofficesapply.com and one thing, if you go, when you go to the website, you might want to sign up. We have a free newsletter. And in that free, news, free newsletter, we also will post and and uh, the safety net position, so you can have that. That's free. It's part of the free newsletter. 
the titanium is about seventy dollars a month. We have a pretty significant discount. You can get it for also for seven hundred dollars a year. We have quite a few customers that you know they'll sign up initially for the seventy dollars a month, and then when they see the value, they'll say, oh, "I'm going to sign up for the year." And we can set you up with that, no problem. We have a trial offer. You know, if you're not happy within thirty, the first thirty days, let's let us know. We'll give your money back, no problem. And we're going to be adding some new positions this next Monday for titanium. We also have some other trade folios, trade folios if you're interested. We have a Palladium, which is covered calls on and collars on ETFs. And then we have a couple of iron condor ones, chromium and optium. And they're about you know nine eight hundred dollars a month. And then we have double diagonals, which is about seventy dollars a month. Uh, the iron condors and double diagonals are a neutral position. We manage those. We roll them in, out, you know, whatever it takes to make money and keep them out of trouble. We also have what's called plus, and plus is basically everything. You know, titanium, palladium, optium, chromium, quantum. You also get the safety net in there as well. This is a excellent one of our email one of our customers emailed us he said I looked at your reported performance for titanium and palladium he said I put 406,000 in about February 2010 at Options Express and he signed up for auto trade and he says that as of that day which is a couple months ago he had 457,000 in the account and he'd also taken out 20,000 and he says it seems you're not tooting your own horn loud enough okay so we're tooting our horn today <laughs> And you can email us. There's our email, support at poweroffsupply.com. You can call us, our phone number, 302-992-7971. We also have a toll-free number. If you're in the U.S., 877-992-7971. also want to talk about power options because power options is what we use primarily to manage power options applied. And, you know, you can, as I showed you today, how you can set up um, the Bollinger Band, actually, if you look where the Bollinger Band is, if you look... Yep, that's it. Kind of right, that's it right there. That's where you can set up the Bollinger Band. And I also talked to you about uh, the recommended list. You can kind of set that up right there. And then the moving average that I talked about is right in this area. So you can set that up. And we have the 20-minute delayed, which is about, which is about, which is 60, you know, about 60 a month. Six, we also have a discount for that, 600 a year. We have real-time for 80 a month or 800 a year. And we also have the real-time plus back-testing for 100 a month or 1,000. The back-testing is um, what we use a lot to kind of examine positions and what we could have done differently or, or, you know, if we'd have been in this position, what could we have done, you know, to roll out. So uh, the, the back-testing is, is really nice. You can... The tool, the back testing tool, looks just like our search engine. So you can, once you learn how to use our search engine, you can learn how to do the back testing very easily. You just change the date. Pretty much everything else is the same. And one of the big advantages of that is if you're just getting into trading or you're starting to learn a new strategy, let's say you're just starting to learn uh, iron condors, for example, or maybe calendar spreads, and you want to paper trade it before you actually trade, well, the back testing allows you to do several months of paper trading in a one hour, two hour, three hour period as you're analyzing the, the uh, results there as opposed to having to wait an expiration to expiration to see how that works. Exactly, exactly. And the email for Power Options is support at powerop.com. Not Power Options, but powerop.com. The same phone numbers. And then there's the website at powerop.com. Uh, Mike, do we have any questions? Um, well, we had a couple uh, questions come in. Um, the first thing I think uh, you might want to mention is that earlier you had discussed um, the brokers that you use for auto trade, but you didn't really mention the specific ones. What are some of the specific brokers on the uh, Power Options Applied Services that you can use uh, for the auto trading? Well, most, mostly we use Options Express. Okay. Uh, so that's the primary one that we use. And what I always tell customers, you know, they sometimes customers complain that Option Express has 
higher brokerage and commission fees. And what I always tell them is, you know, call them and call the Options Express and tell them, you know, I've got this much money and I'm going to trade, you know, trade and cover calls and I'm going to have this many positions a month, you know, and my other broker, you know, they, they charge me this per month. You know, what can you do, you know, to give me a better commission rate? And hopefully they'll, you know, deal with you a little bit. That's been my experience that they will, but you know, I haven't actually done it in a while. Any other questions? Yes. Now, uh, you, would, you and I have talked about this before. Um, Glenn, great customer of ours. He joins us for several of our webinars, and, and occasionally he wants to know when he hears some of the discussion of the presentations that I'll do on the open discussion presentations or with, the, uh, with Kurt Frankenberg at Radioactive Trading or on some of my caller presentations that I did. Uh, what he usually asks is, or who he would like to know, is that there is there a way to program the techniques that you're using into a computer? And, and what I mean by that, are you able to sort of use a black box for the criteria that you're looking for, the triggers that you're looking for, for the titanium and the adjustments that you make? And the reason why I bring this up is that you and I have discussed this briefly once or twice during the meetings here at Power Financial Group, and you had some comments on that, but you're usually not on the webinars with me uh, to relate that to Glenn. So what are your thoughts? on about trying to program the titanium criteria for finding the positions and the management techniques in a sort of a black box or sort of a, an algorithmic trading program? Uh, well, you could do it to some extent, I think, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff like, for example, I'm going and, you know, doing the analysis, you know, I mean, like looking at, uh, that conference call information, right? You know, listen to the audio. I mean, really, that would be hard to program. Um, so you would miss out on some of that. That, that those aspects. Um, I think if you, you know, if you leave some of that out, you could probably do it. Um, but I wouldn't recommend that. I, I'm really advocate that you go and listen to the conference calls and listen to the CEO what he has to say about the company and, uh, you know, what what they think their future looks like. Um, so, you know, not a, you couldn't do it 100%, but you could come up with some kind of something to do it. Yeah, and we talked, uh, we'd also seen, er <coughs> excuse me, Mike, we'd seen earlier um, uh, someone out there, I can't remember who it was, if it was um, MSN Market or if it was The Motley Fool, they tried to create an index um, for news articles. It was really interesting. They had some way of looking at titles. It was like a kind of like a Google search where they were looking for positive news versus negative news. And they're saying that that was a way to kind of skip the conference calls because if it matched this index, you could do it. And a lot of times I actually saw that uh, that particular index put out opposites where the news was, so, you know, Someone would had a title where it said, "Earnings for uh, X Y Z are not good, or are the opposite of good." And the thing would just the algorithm would just look for X Y Z earnings and good. And if it was there, it would rate it a positive, <laughs> but it's actually a negative. So that kind of got a little tricky. Um, but yeah, I always like to look at the headlines of the company. Um, you know, go into the company information to see if there's any. In addition to the conference call, see if there's any news out there recently. If there's anything about a patent lawsuit or boardroom scandal or anything like that. Right now I haven't seen a way to program that into the systems, any systems. Well, yeah, well there's other things you want to consider too. And that you, I mean, you want to look at sectors, you know, you want to, mm -hmm. you know, you want to know, you know, is this sector kind of all beaten down? I mean, I guess you could program that, but you know, you want to know, you know, when I got into Kohl's, you know, I looked at some of their competitors to see what the hell they were kind of doing. So mm -hmm. you, you know, you, if, if Kohl's wasn't, you know, doing very good, but their competitors were all doing really well. And I think, well, something's wrong with Coles. But at the time, you know, Coles wasn't doing well, and some of their competitors weren't doing well. So, yeah, I guess it's programmable. I guess there's another kind of thing I wanted to talk about a little bit as far okay. as covered calls, is that there's another thing that you can do for covered call is you, I already mentioned, but you can leg in. And let's look at, I pulled this Coles tar back up. But, you know, one thing you can do is you can, like, Let's start back here at the beginning. Let's say you bought Kohl's kind of like in February. You just bought the stock. You didn't do a call option. And then when it peaked out, you know, kind of around April, you know, it might be kind of hard to find those peaks, but you can get maybe close. You sell the call option, so you leg in. All right, well, it goes back down. All right, and so the call option starts to lose value. So you can, like... 
close out on the call option down here, but you still hang on to the stock. And then, so then maybe it goes back up, and so you sell a call option, you know, in, in October. It goes down, maybe you get out of it in, in November. And so then coal sh shoots up in December, you sell another call option, goes down, you close the call option in December. So you've made, every time you sold the call option and then, and then uh, closed it, you know, for a profit. So that's another way that you can kind of play the covered calls, is especially if you have a stock that's kind of in a, what I call a trading range. Mm -hmm. Now, trading range is a stock that's in, been in a range for, you know, for a long time. And you can see calls has kind of been in a trading range. So this is one of those stocks that you might be able to do that with. Now, the stocks that's just shooting up, those are kind of a little bit more difficult, would be a little more difficult to try to, to do this leg against them. Mm -hmm. And you had talked uh, earlier. Yeah, you had talked just real quick. You had talked earlier, of course, about uh, collar spreads, for example, that you right. use with the palladium. And this type of legging in, with especially with the up and downs, that could be beneficial into the palladium trade folio, where you mainly work with the different ETFs and some stocks. But selling calls at the peaks, and then of course maybe also mm -hmm. buying a put, rolling out of the put when it's at its profitable level, and then selling another call. It's another advantage that you can do uh, that you take advantage of, I should say, in the uh, palladium trade folio as well. Well, actually, we've been legging in and doing some of that in titanium, but we haven't done it in palladium yet. I have plans to do that in palladium. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we haven't been legging into palladium, but I, I am looking, you know, considering doing that now. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple minutes left. If you have any last-minute questions uh, regarding the uh, titanium presentation today for Power Options Applied that was presented by Mike Phillips. Go ahead and queue those up. Use the question pod to send them over, and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer those. Uh, Mr. Phillips might actually have to uh, depart in the next few minutes, but I'll be more than happy to stay online if any questions come in, and I'll uh, handle some of his questions or some of the questions that you might have regarding the covered calls, regarding uh, the titanium trade folios or the portfolios on uh, Power Options Applied as well, I should say. So if you have any of those questions, just go ahead and send them in. Glenn, thank you for joining us. Glenn says, thanks, Mike, for your answer, and uh, thanks for the presentation. You're welcome. You're welcome. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Okay, well, Ed, that's, uh, I might have to answer that because I don't know if you have, you have the time to stay online, uh, Mike, to answer this. But Ed wants to know, explain rolling out a little bit more and, and how this works. And uh, well, that's, that's sort of the, the things that are in titanium that Mike Phillips has used over the past several years is the idea of when a position is either, you know, it looks like it's going to breach a certain point. Um, he has, I don't want to say algorithms, but he has, you have ideas in the background there where you look to roll the call, maybe to get a higher premium or to roll to a different strike price. It's, it's a common way to roll a covered call in different scenarios, what, uh, but Mike has what he's looking for in each position. So Mike, how would you want to explain that quickly? Well, this is an example that we did for calls. You see, the you know we we sold the call option for for the February call option, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, the time value was was there wasn't much time value left. That's about less than one percent, there, isn't it? Yeah, and so and that's typically what we do. We won't, we try to once the position gets you know, less than 1%, the time value, we'll, we'll try to roll it. So we roll from, you know, this position, which had, you know, 1% to another position, which you had know, probably 2 3% of you know, time value. So we, do, we just roll from February. This is a really a very plain vanilla type roll because we're rolling just a month out, same strike. Mm -hmm. We made 90 cents of extra income from the roll. And that, you know, that 90 cents is, you know, another, we added another 30 days, but we picked up another 2 or 3%. And you can also roll up and down, right? We, you know, there may be cases where instead of rolling to 52 and a half, we might roll to 55. Yeah, if there's an enriched premium and you had maybe the expectation that the stock was coming off of another low based on the charts and it might be going up towards 55, that might be an absolute choice. And another thing, you know, we might roll down. You know, we might roll, if the stock goes down, we might roll down to 50. So, it's, and, you know, you're not just constrained to, 
March. You know, you, mm-hmm. you, it's, it, you you don't have to roll just the next month, but you don't make as much you know time value per time per day. I have you want to say that you know just you know like the time value for this March might have been two three percent. Whereas if we decided to go to out to April, we might have picked up another percent. You know, maybe three, maybe four, but you know, not yeah. not a significant another uh, amount of additional uh, time value. Yeah, another 60 days, is it worth it for just 1%? And uh, Ed followed up with, you do this to capture more profits, so more often than not, you are not taking a loss on the original call. Is that correct? Uh, sometimes you are, sometimes you aren't. It just varies. If, you know, if, the, if, the, if the stock price is appreciated, then the call option has, the call option has a loss. So the total position is profitable, but mm-hmm. the call option might have a loss. Yeah, and we sold the call at here. So remember, this original call was sold at 137. He's buying it back for 85 now, so he's still got a gain on the original short call in his favor. And then he's going rolling out to get more premium in. Yeah, in this particular case, that was that was what happened. It doesn't mm-hmm. always happen that way. And you know, as I said, sometimes the covered call makes a better return, and sometimes the stock makes a better return. <laughs> the the nice thing is that whenever the stock goes against you. Pretty much, the cover call will always have a better return. You know, unless, you know, unless it rubber bands, it goes down and back up again. So mm. it goes, you know, an example is if it goes down and you roll down and it bounces back up. Then, in that case, you know, the stock that had a loss would not perform the cover call. But if you just take a stock that you know just falls off a cliff and you keep rolling down, the cover call, the cover call will always have a better return, and I guess better return of a less negative return. Than just owning the stock outright. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't see any more questions coming in. Uh, Mike, did you have anything else to add for the audience this afternoon? I uh, really appreciate everybody stopping in with us. And you know, if you have any questions, just give us a call. We're happy to talk to you. And let's uh, can you flash that slide up again real quick for us? The last slide there with the contact information. Uh, let's see if I can get on there. There it is. All right. So just want to show this one. If you have any questions after the presentation, you think of something later this afternoon, this weekend, go ahead and send us an email to support at powerop.com. I'll make sure that Mike Phillips sees your emails there. And then, of course, during the market hours, you can reach us toll free if you're inside the continental U.S. at 877-992-7971. If you live outside the continental U.S., you can reach us at 302 302- 992-7971. Real quick, the website Mike's showing here, powerop.com, those are the tools for if you want to be self-directed, if you're um, looking for the positions on your own. But if you want to take a look at more information on the uh, titanium trade folio or the safety net description, uh, we mentioned a little bit about palladium, you just want to go to www.poweroptionsapplied.com. Oh, you just, you just had it there a little bit. <laughs> then you can just go to poweroptionsapplied.com. You can see some of the historical trades there. Uh, Mike has written a good description for each one of the products of what his, pers- his target goals are for each trade folio that he supplies and uh, you know, sort of the win-loss record, what he's looking for as far as the win-loss record goes on each one. And then if you have questions about that, still just send us an email to uh, support at powerop.com or support at poweroptionsapplied.com or give us a call during the trading day. Okay. Goodbye. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a fantastic weekend. We look to see you next week at one of our other free webinars. As usual, we'll have our open discussion presentation Friday at 4.30. And, of course, we also might have some other instructional and strategy webinars next week as well, maybe Thursday afternoon, maybe Thursday evening. So we hope to see you again real soon, and you can sign up for those webinars, the free webinars we have.